Okay, hello everyone. So uh, today's topic will be the road to salsa for applying six star ecosystem in a corporate environment. Um, I'm Alex Elgaev, and um, in this talk we'll look on six star on a bit of a different angle. We'll look at it from a corporate perspective. Um, in, the past, in the past month, uh, me and my team in Cycord we were looking extensively at six star uh, researching and to, uh, in, to, in order to understand how can we take it and and apply it in our internal uh, CI environments, and we wanted to achieve two goals. We wanted uh, to sign our artifacts through the CI keylessly, and we wanted also to uh, to use Git sign, to use Git sign as it should, and uh, to uh, easily uh, uh, sign all our commits. Um, Originally, also Gabriel, our head of DevOps in Cycle, worked on this topic. Unfortunately, he couldn't come to the, to the conference. So, okay, let's start with the agenda. Uh, see, this, this is the Sixtor conference, so we will start explaining what is Sixtor. I don't think it's uh, much necessary, but we will uh, explain what is Sixtor and uh, even more important, why corporate should adopt it. Uh, we explore uh, the Sixtor tooling. Uh, and then we will go into uh, understand why, uh, what the issue could be have into, uh, into uh, working with the public infrastructure of Sixtor in terms of uh, privacy and how to create maybe self-hosted Sixtor infrastructure and also why. Um, then we will explore some how to use Sixtor to sign artifacts in several uh, real-world uh, CI environments. And finally, uh, we'll talk about some of the insights uh, of, this, uh, of this research. Um, originally, when I applied for this talk, I also wanted to, to, to talk about the verification process and maybe more thoroughly talking about GitSign and the issue of, of, you, of currently adopting GitSign in corporates. Uh, unfortunately, I, don't have, well, I won't have enough time to talk about this in 20, 20 minutes, so uh, maybe in the next talks. Okay, so I'm Alex Elgaev. I'm a senior security researcher at uh, SciCode. Uh, previously, I led the malware research team at uh, Checkpoint, uh, where I was uh, doing a lot of reverse engineering for complex uh, pieces of malware, so investigating uh, attacks, both originated in cybercrime and uh, APTs. And nowadays, I uh, investigate the research vulnerabilities and uh, mitigations uh, for software supply chain, part of Psycode. Uh, Psycode is a, a cybersecurity company that provides a complete software supply chain solution for organizations. Um, okay, so what is Six Tor? I don't think it's a, there's a lot of to talk about uh, with uh, all the great talks we had uh, so far. Um, but uh, basically a new standard for signing, verifying, protecting uh, aspects of software development. development. It was uh, uh, originally uh, was built speci specific, specifically for open source projects, but we will look at it from uh, also a bit of a different pr perspective. Um, okay, so what would be the motivation uh, for, uh, uh, for corporate, for example, our corporate, when we look at it, to, into uh, adopting uh, adopting a six-store tooling. So let's uh, let's take an, an example. Uh, we have two main cases for such corporates. The first one is uh, uh, using uh, internal artifacts that are built in the CI environments of the corporate, which are were deployed into a the uh, internal production environments of the corporate. Uh, so we can, it can be used to validate artifacts uh, before deployment by the corporate itself. And I'm focusing mainly on the uh, keyless signature. For example, we could verify uh, if we have like several uh, personals that are authorized to, uh, to sign uh, artifacts, we could verify that these were the only ones that were uh, uh, signing on this artifact before deployed to production. Also, it can be also used to validate the uh, artifacts before being used by the external client. They could be uh, uh, clients that using this, uh, uh, the components of, uh, uh, of the packages, or they could be used also as a, uh, uh, also clients like open source clients. 
So uh, all these uh, uh, packages could be, uh, can, it must be signed through the CI environment of the corporate and be uh, verified uh, that uh, this was signed specifically by the uh, corporate, for example, email address or someone inside the, uh, inside the, uh, the development process. Uh, some of the additional benefits you could have, it's also could satisfy some of the requirements for salsa, uh, similarly to the um, to the salsa provenance builder that uh, using uh, reusable workflows uh, uh, to satisfy non-falsifiable requirements and achieve uh, salsa free. So you could also use the cosine, for example, to sign additional uh, pieces of information. In addition, we could also uh, adopt a uh, git sign to sign commit and tags and to allow tracing the origins of the code insertion. This could, all, this could help to remove the burden of handling uh, GPG keys and maintaining them across uh, large enterprises. And also it uh, allows you a higher integrity level for uh, each and every commit inserted to the code repository even satisfy the, uh, some salsa requirements, for example, the verified history. So let's go over quickly some of the uh, six or tooling to understand how they work, and then we'll see how can we use them uh, in some complex uh, CI environment. So the first one is Recor. There are a lot of been talking, talking about uh, Recor here. So basically it's a, a it's an immutable temper-resistant ledger of uh, metadata built on top of a trillion tool by uh, Google. Uh, basically, it's a, a, it's a, a public uh, infrastructure, six or, six or four the public infrastructure of Recor, that uh, everyone can uh, add, uh, add the metadata to it and, uh, and query and verify that, uh, uh, query and verify it. Um, so in SIGSTORE, it's mainly used to store signatures for artifacts and also the certificates that uh, are uh, the short-lived certificates that are uh, been used to, uh, to, sign, uh, to sign that artifact. Another additional important tool is FOSIO, which is the root CA that, uh, uh, that's in charge of signing and, and, uh, and issuing the short-lived certificates. Uh, the FUSIO basically it's a, it's a, you you give it a, some uh, OADC token, some OpenID token that proves your uh, identity. Uh, FUSIO need to uh, to check whether uh, this token was uh, is valid through some configuration it has. It can check it can check it through uh, several identity providers. It could be uh, GitHub, Microsoft, Google, GitHub Actions could you also use a DEX identity provider, which is an open source popular uh, identity provider. And if Pulse have found that uh, the token is uh, valid, so it will uh, issue, oh, sorry. It will issue a, a short-lived certificate according to the uh, identity given, uh, identity from the, the token. So one of the important uh, uh, factors about FullCO, that's its, uh, its strength is, is uh, it depends on the root CA. So if the root CA is, a, a, is a compromised or isn't secured enough, so we can't really trust uh, uh, FullCO. So it's a very important factor into whether you want or not to raise your own uh, self-hosted version of uh, FullCO. Cosine is uh, basically the uh, signing uh, uh, tool uh, for, uh, for SIGSTOR. It allows you to sign uh, artifacts and maybe additional attestation uh, data. And it stores the uh, data on the OCI registry. And finally, the git sign. I think we can skip that. Priya explained it way better than I do. So if we look up uh, from the corporate perspective, the using public uh, instance of record could be quite uh, problematic. Uh, for example, I used Cosine to sign, sign some simple uh, image of mine. It's called Simple Go Server. It, this, it was stored on the public instance of record. 
we can see the, the, the index number. Everyone can just go and query this, uh, uh, this, uh, this entry in a record, uh, extract the certificate from, the, from this entry and get my, my email number. It could be personal, it could be corporate. Um, this could be quite an issue for a corporate, specifically when also uh, looking on Git sign, which uh, implies on a way and, and a lot more if entries such that, and if, if the artifacts are private or the project is private, it could be an issue to expose a, a, a lot of uh, maybe email numbers. It could be also uh, maybe identity of uh, machines or GitHub action workflows or whatever. Uh, additional issues we could, could have with uh, also with full CEO, even though it's not uh, publicly accessible to everyone, it still demands uh, trusting the uh, full CEO server to store your uh, emails and your certificates. You need to trust the root certificate, your root certificate and uh, and the OF app that uh, um, that uh, gives you the uh, short lived certificate. So even though I don't recommend it to do it for any, any organization, it's still I, w I wanted to uh, experiment what it, it means to uh, raise your self-hosted your self -hosted infrastructure for, uh, uh, for RIC or Fulcio and the rest of the Sixtor. And the best source was uh, a Sixtor the hard way, uh, created by Luke and by several additional contributors. And it, uh, it wasn't so hard actually. Uh, yeah, but not so hard, but still, uh, I, I will mention it in the end. It, uh, it, the most problem it was maybe uh, raising the full uh, instance, but it demands like maintaining the uh, the root CA and private keys, which can be uh, very uh, demanding for uh, maybe smaller companies. So I don't recommend it to, for every, every organization, but if you want, it's possible. So let's see some hello world for a simple signature using a self-hosted infrastructure. First, we'll need to define several environment variables. We need to get the so-called new root CA. There's also a public key for a certificate transparent, the part of the full seal. So whenever we uh, want to use it, uh, just run, running cosine uh, for our uh, image that we want to sign, we give it an, like, some additional uh, uh, parameters like the, uh, the new uh, so-called uh, record and full send OF uh, uh, endpoint. This leads us to uh, some uh, login screen similar to, uh, to the public uh, six row infrastructure. Using it, we're choosing our, for example, a Google account or identity they want to use it to sign the artifact. And finally, when the uh, signature uh, succeeds, say succeeds, we uh, have like entry in the record that we we can uh, query whenever we want, and we get our the identity, the, the certificate which contains the identity which you, that used uh, that was used to sign the artifact. Uh, it also includes the issuer, uh, which in our case it's uh, off.psycho.dev that uh, issued this uh, certificate. Similar procedure also we can apply for a uh, git sign. Uh, we need also to uh, define several uh, environment variables uh, that defines the, the new self-hosted infrastructure. Uh, when in every commit we just log in through a Google account, we choose a Google account. And we, uh, we have this entry that's saved on record that uh, uh, we can verify and, and see that uh, it contains the certificate uh, on the name of the one who made the commit. Okay, so now, to, now that we made some introduction of the six for tooling and maybe how to create a self-hosted uh, version for, uh, for corporates, let's look about let, let's, let's look at um, several uh, uh, common uh, use cases of CI environments in, uh, in corporate and how can we integrate the uh, uh, six or tooling, including uh, signing uh, artifacts uh, using that environment totally carelessly and, uh, um, 
And uh, the point I want to mention is that we don't want the developers uh, to know about it, to be transparent as we can for the developers themselves. So we will explore uh, two, uh, two scenarios. And the first one is using uh, GitHub code management with GitHub Actions CI. We'll use GitHub hosted machines for the CI, and finally we will push the artifact uh, to uh, Docker Hub. Uh, and for the second case, which is to be quite more complex, we will manage our code in GitLab and use GitLab runner CI, but uh, we will use a self-manage or a manage, it doesn't really matter, a, a private Kubernetes cluster uh, that will run the CI builds uh, in, uh, by uh, pulling uh, GitLab. And this build should, should build uh, the, the image and push it to Docker Hub. So how the architecture pre-6 pre store will look like. I'm a user. I will be uh, pushing code into GitHub. GitHub will provision me a new VM on each, uh, on each new build. And this UI job will push, uh, will build uh, the image and push it to Docker Hub. Um, if I will be pushing the code to uh, GitLab, I have like a managed, uh, in our case, a GK cluster. It could be AKS or EKS, it doesn't matter. There will be a managed cluster and, uh, and a pod inside the cluster that will be polling GitLab for a new job. Whenever the new job will be received, it will provision a new pod, and, uh, and that pod will do the CI job, including pushing the image to Docker Hub. Okay, so first let's look at the GitHub action case. Um, a simple uh, solution to this uh, issue into integrating Sixtor could be through reusable, reusable workflows, uh, very similar to the uh, Salsa Provenance Builder. Uh, imagine a GitHub Action uh, workflow when the first, when they had two jobs, the first job is like building the, uh, the image and pushing it to Docker Hub, and the second job will be uh, adding a signature to the image. It could be, it, it, it would be calling a, a re reusable workflow and an external workflow that could be reused in also in several other uh, builds. An important factor that it should be sent a permission to, uh, with ID token to that reusable workflow. Uh, this ID token is, uh, is giving the reusable workflow a JAW token as an environment variable that could be used uh, to, to uh, give identity to the signature process. We're also sending uh, a parameter of the, the image name that it should be assigning. So how this reusable workflow looks like? Uh, first, it should be defining several environment variables. Uh, uh, we said we want to, to try it out with a self-hosted infrastructure, so we're giving it the right uh, recurrent full seal. We, we should also be giving it the, um, the root CA for the full seal, which is fetching from some uh, from a, a GCP bucket. Um, and uh, inside the, the, the workflow itself, it's very plain simple, we're just signing it, giving it the right parameters, and giving it an uh, OIDC provider of GitHub Action. Uh, fortunately, a cosign is supporting GitHub Action as many other identity providers, so he knows how to uh, uh, fetch the, the JOT token from the environment variable and use it to authenticate against the uh, a GitHub Actions identity provider. Uh, so what will be the result? Imagine we're running this uh, CI build, uh, uh, this reusable workflow, we are running some our sample uh, image. So when we finish running it, we'll be succeed, succeeding in, in uh, pushing and building and pushing the image and we receive our entry in recall. Uh, when we query this entry, we will see that it contains this certificate. Uh, Fulsa is aware of GitHub Action, it knows how to put the right uh, uh, properties in the certificate. It contains handful of information. First, the uh, issuer of uh, GitHub Actions, the workflow trigger, the commit uh, the workflow name, and more. So we were able to integrate, integrate uh, Sixtor as part of our CI. Uh, it, it wasn't so hard, but let's look at a more, more complex uh, scenario. For the second scenario, said we are using GitLab and Kubernetes Executor for GitLab. 
This means that uh, every, uh, every new job is provisioned as a new pod in, in, in the managed or in the self-hosted uh, cluster. So uh, to, in order to sign keylessly the image in the, uh, in that, uh, the self-hosted or managed Kubernetes, we need uh, some identity uh, in order to, to send to Fulcio and receive the self-hosted, uh, self-short-lived uh, certificate. So where can we fetch that identity from? We have several options. The first will be to use an environment available called CI job uh, JWT, which supply to every uh, GitLab uh, execution. Uh, GitLab provides every, uh, every job this uh, variable that contains, it, it's signed by the, uh, by the GitLab uh, service itself. And it gives information about uh, the, uh, the actual job that's running. It can be used to many, uh, many use cases. Many use cases are like using it to uh, to authenticate against HashiCorp Vault and, uh, and additional cases. Specifically, I don't recommend uh, it using it here because it, you can't you can generate uh, um, a token for specific audience like you can in, in other uh, identity providers. Uh, additional uh, solution will be to use the GCP metadata service. I said that we are using GKE. This means that uh, our, the nodes in the cluster are uh, running as a compute uh, virtual machines on uh, GCP. So every VM is, uh, can access to some metadata service and get its uh, identity from a GCP that's, uh, that's validly signed by GCP. We can maybe use this identity in order to sign the artifact. So we, we have a, a strong authentication that the artifact was signed in our, uh, by our specific nodes in GCP. Uh, this can be a decent uh, solution, but it won't be enough because, because we won't be utilizing that we have a like, Kubernetes cluster and we have specific pods that were doing this build. So it, this solution isn't good enough. Uh, the first solution would be to using a Kubernetes identity service. As I said, we have like a managed uh, GKE cluster, so we can, uh, we can ask Kubernetes to, to sign the token and use that token. Uh, it's also a decent solution, but it demands exposing the cluster, J JWKS endpoint, so it should be uh, verified somehow that, uh, that the token is actually valid. Uh, so the final uh, uh, solution, that may be the most complex one, is that it uses Spiffy Spire. It could give us the best of both worlds, both uh, using the Kubernetes and the uh, uh, Kubernetes identity server and the GCP meta server. And we can uh, authenticate nodes using GCP and authenticate workloads, workloads using the uh, Kubernetes workload attestor. So this is how the architecture looks like. It's quite complex, but we will uh, go over it uh, step by step. First, we need to create some uh, Spiffy Spire infrastructure. Uh, there's uh, excellent uh, tutorials and uh, quick starts uh, for, uh, for that. I personally, I suggest uh, to install a Spire on, on some, uh, uh, in some different or uh, different server than on the, on the cluster you're using to build your uh, images on. And you also install the Spire agent through some daemon set inside your Kubernetes. So every, uh, uh, Every node that will be uh, will have this uh, Spire API, uh, and the build that will be running on this node will have access to that API. Uh, also, the Spire agent will be authenticating with the GCP metadata service, and uh, an attest as the agent do the being part of our GCP project. For example, so when I install this Spire agents and I went to the Spire server to see all the agent list. I could, see, I could say that I identify the three nodes I have in my cluster, and each of them has a specific uh, uh, spiffy ID. Uh, uh, this, this, that means that the Spire agent was uh, successfully authenticated against the uh, uh, GCP service. Next, we'll have to define uh, some several selectors for the workload attestation. Up to this point, we attested the nodes. Now we, have, now we need to attest the 
the workloads that will be uh, provisioned on every new build. So for that, we're creating two uh, new entries in the Spire server. The first, we're giving a, a spiffy ID of build node to every uh, node that is specifically in our uh, Cycled Labs UCP project. We already attested the node, so uh, uh, that's how he, he chooses the nodes and, and, uh, and giving them the specific spiffy ID. And we're adding, uh, adding additional entry we for uh, uh, workloads that every workload that uh, was uh, that has parent ID of the specific build node, which is the, the previous we defined, and also in a namespace that called GitLab Runner, will receive this uh, spiffy ID of builder, which is spiffy ID that given to uh, workloads. Uh, potentially, we could add uh, additional selectors here. The uh, spiffy uh, Spire uh, supports a lot of selectors. Uh, and the more we add it, the more secure uh, the process will be. Uh, next, we need to allow all the new pods uh, will be provisioned in the build to have access to the Spire API. Because we are using a built-in uh, GitLab image for the, uh, for the pods, uh, which don't have the volume of the Spire mounted, uh, GitLab doesn't have support out of the box for a uh, Spire. So we uh, use the uh, Kiverno policy to mount uh, uh, the uh, Spire API, this means the Spire Unis Unix socket, for every, every new pod that is specifically in the GitLab runner namespace, which is the namespace in our cluster that all the new uh, builds will be uh, created in. So this uh, Kiverno policy just solved this issue for us. And finally, we need to uh, configure the GitLab CI workflow uh, to get the SVID. SVID is like an identity token that we received from Aspire that uh, identifies the specific workload. So we're getting this SVID, we're sending it to Fulcio to receive a, a, a short lived certificate on, our, on behalf of our identity. And we're using this certificate to sign the artifact. Finally, this uh, entire uh, workflow, it's quite, quite complex to build, but it has zero key management. Uh, and and the building it, you, you don't need to be aware of the identities on the underlying build system to build it. So this is how the uh, finally CI file in GitLab uh, looks like. We are defining a batch of uh, environment variables for the, for the infrastructure. For, uh, we're defining the spiffy endpoint socket and um, several six store uh, variables. All these variables could also be defined through some Kiverno policy uh, to be default. Finally, we used the Kaniko uh, uh, image to build the Docker, to build the, the image. And we're using a, a cosine with our, uh, uh, with our variables with OADC provider spiffy and for our server. So Cosine uh, 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 knows out of the box to work with the uh, uh, spiffy, uh, spiffy API and gets the SVID and use it to sign the, uh, sign the image. So when we run it in uh, GitLab, uh, we'll manage to sign our artifact. We push it, uh, uh, the signature to, uh, uh, to Recor. And when we uh, query Recor, we would see the next certificate. Uh, certificate was issued to this uh, spiffy ID of, uh, of the builder node, which we defined in the Inspire. And it was also issued by uh, oidc.psycho.dev, which is the spiffy authority. So uh, this is what the, the CI uh, use cases. Let's, let's some of the insights we had. Uh, through the process. Um, first, uh, regarding self-hosted Fulcio, as I said, it may become complicated due to a, a management of uh, the root CA. It could be uh, quite tedious to do it. And uh, propagating the uh, public key of root CA and the uh, certificate transparency log public key to the signers and verifiers uh, could demand some uh, maintenance work. Uh, additional usages for a cosine could be also do some artifact attestation. So we could use the, the uh, 
the architecture we build right now, you can use it also to sign whether it will be a provenance, SVOMB, or an ability report, or any, uh, any metadata we want, it will be attached to the specific uh, artifact. Um, and also some regards regarding the managed uh, Kubernetes cluster or any other environment. So um, uh, it can take quite some time to build the right uh, solution and can, 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 can take some time and effort. Uh, but this effort can be also beneficial for uh, not only signing the artifact, artifact but also additional, uh, uh, additional attestations uh, that could bring you to a higher salsa level. So, uh, some takeaway from this talk. Uh, we were experimenting with SIGSource a lot and we're trying to bring this, uh, this knowledge to the conference and the bottom line is SIGSource is great. Um, so even though it was designed with open source in mind, we wanted to deliver that it also can fit some uh, organization to secure their artifact, whether they're uh, internally used or externally by, uh, by other clients. Um, creating all the, all the infrastructure from scratch is doable, but it's not recommended for every organization. Uh, also, you can apply some hybrid approach, for example, creating only the Rico instance and use the full seal. Um, and finally, the support of uh, identity solutions in six or cosine uh, specifically is, is enhancing the capabilities to support some complex uh, CI scenarios, like we've seen in the, in the Spiffy Spar and Kubernetes uh, uh, environment. Okay, that's it, thank you.